Last year, at roughly the same time, I shared with you my skincare heroes. The products I would immediately repurchase should by some horrible accident all my stash vanish overnight. Now that 2020 is over, and I guess it's safe to say no one's sorry about that, it is time to look back and see just how much my preferences have changed for each category and why. A few words about my skin in case you're new here. I will be 42 in four weeks, so I guess mature is the category that I best fit in. I suffer from acne and post-inflammatory erythema and to treat that I use tretinoin which in turn can sometimes make my skin sensitive to other potentially irritating products. Other than that my skin can sometimes get a little oily around the t-zone but is otherwise pretty normal in terms of hydration and such. For specific concerns, the loss of firmness around my jawline, also known as sagging, bothers me much more than the wrinkles I have on my forehead and around my eyes. Hi, I'm Dr. Anne. I'm a medical doctor with a passion for skincare that works. On this channel, we explore the science behind skin and do quick reviews so you learn to pick exactly those products that work for your individual skin concern. So if this is something you're interested in, please consider subscribing and ring the notification bell. Now that you have all the background information, let's start with the first category. Best Cleansers 2020, which actually really starts with a new discovery, the Inky List Oat Cleansing Balm. Unlike other balms, it comes in a tube rather than a pot, which makes it great to travel with, but hard to get every last bit out. I will probably be cutting this one open soon. Great for dissolving my makeup, it leaves my skin feeling nourished and calm. My go-to cleanser for tretinoin nights. Another new discovery and more of a special occasion cleanser is the Pixie Clarity Cleanser. It's it's a salicylic acid one and really helps me fight the congestion that comes with monthly hormonal changes and wearing a face mask. As for how it compares to other salicylic acid face washes, I don't know, I never tried one before, but the wash of BHA is just enough to not irritate my tretinoin treated skin, but at the same time clear out my pores. For a more refreshing everyday cleanse, I will reach for the Murat Environmental Shield Essential C Cleanser, a gel that slightly foams up when used. This is not the one for dehydrated or dry skin, but in summer or after a sweaty workout, of which I had way too less last year, it's perfect. And because I know I will get the comment, no, you do not need vitamin C in a range of product. It makes much more sense in a leave-on serum, but even without that added benefit, it would be my go-to cleanser for summer. Moving on to toners or face mists, a step that is absolutely not crucial for a good routine, but one that I rarely skip. 2020 was the year I started dabbling in Korean beauty, and well, they do make great toners. So while the Pixie Rose Glow Tonic is still one that I keep in my rotation unchanged from last year's favorites, I would add the Purito Centella Unscented toner as a new font staple. Purito did get some backlash due to the sunscreen of the same line, but the toner is without fault. Incredibly hydrating, not sticky at all, and layers beautiful with everything. Another one that has been with me for years now is the Caudalie Grape Water. It doesn't get enough credit, but has the finest mist and a lovely lightweight formula that makes it perfect for layering. Now my favorite category. Serums. If I compare them to the favorites from last year, there are a few slight changes, but nothing groundbreaking new. For basic hydration, the Inkylist Hyaluronic Acid one is still my number one. It is cheap, non-sticky, and has some peptides thrown in for good measure. A more recent discovery that I keep coming back to is the 10 Lux Super Glow, which is a hydrating serum as well, but with added self-tan that makes me look fresh and healthy rather than yellow and sicklish, something that can happen quite quickly with my undertone and pale skin. Speaking of peptides, last year I mentioned the Inkylist's Collagen Serum that I used alternating with buffer 
buffet from the ordinary this year it would be the ordinary's buffet plus copper peptides that i use almost exclusively the one thing that hasn't changed at all are the zelens power d treatment drops expensive yes but i'm convinced they are the one thing that allow me to use my tretinoin without constant irritation and peeling so for me worth every cent still in this category as well is estee lauder's advanced night repair recovery complex even though they changed the formula a little i am still testing the waters with the new version so next year's update might bring some differences here as for an antioxidant last year's favorite the pixie vitamin c one had to leave the list because it just oxidizes way too quickly for me to recommend it even when i keep it in the fridge i have not yet found a replacement that convinced me in terms of vitamin c so i will mention the inculus q10 serum instead which in summer doubles up as a lightweight lotion and offers a smooth transition to the next category which is moisturizers last year's lightweight option the murat nutrient charged water gel is still a favorite of mine come summer which is why i don't have a pot around right now for the colder months i rely on the inculus peptide moisturizer which has the right amount of nourishment without being too heavy and comes with a fancy press down packaging despite being very affordable the dear class freshly juiced vitamin e face mask will get an honorable mention on here as well as it could be used as a moisturizer I, however, only reach for it as an overnight sleeping pack, which is just a fancy word for night cream. Rich in niacinamide, vitamin E, and incredibly brightening, it is great to fight post-summer pigmentation. You won't find any other face masks in this video, as I haven't really reached for them throughout the last year. And now the last category, eye creams. No, you don't need a separate product for the eye area unless you want something other than hydration, in which case I think it's sensible to get a dedicated product. I, for example, would not dream of taking my tretinoin up to my eyes, but still want some retinoid action, which is where the Murad Retinol Youth Renewal eye serum comes in. Very gentle, but I think it keeps my under eyes firmer and smoother. And of course, a repeatedly mentioned favorite of mine, the Inculist Caffeine Eye Serum. No retinoid this time, but a miracle in the tube when it comes to depuffing tired eyes, something I needed a lot of throughout the crazy time that was 2020. For sunscreens, I'm going to link up my favorite sunscreens for oily and acne prone skin that I filmed this summer. Nothing much has changed, especially since Pulito had to leave the ring as a contender. Please tell me in the comments about your new or long-standing favorites of 2020. I'm going to link to more videos on the screen now that I think you might enjoy and I'm going to see you all very soon with another one. Bye!